Welcome back everyone. I hope you had a great afternoon tea. Um, this next talk uh, is from Alice Ferrazzi, who is a Gentoo Linux developer and the Gentoo kernel project leader and works as an embedded software engineer at Cybertrust Japan, uh, focusing on the Linux kernel. Um, Alice will be presenting um, uh, integrating uh, the Gentoo kernel testing systems uh, with the kernel CI project. Um, this is a uh, pre-recorded talk, so feel free to put your questions in the Venulus chat. Um, we'll have a short time for Q&A at the end of the talk and uh, Alice will also be watching the chat throughout. Uh, let's go. Hello everyone. In this presentation, I will talk about merging an existing framework into CI or how to test your own kernel project with kernel CI. My name is Alice Ferrazzi. I am a Gen2 developer. I am the Gen2 kernel project leader and I am the Gen2 kernel CI creator. I am part of kernel CI as the technical steering committee member. I am also part of the civil infrastructure platform as a testing working group member. I am working for Miracle Linux powered by Cybertrust Japan as a software engineer and I am the lead SAI system development for AM Linux that is an embedded Linux distribution developed by Cybertrust Japan. So in this presentation I will at first talk about CI, what is CI, who is doing CI, and why CI is needed. I will uh, talk about the uh, CI composition. I will uh, talk about the big picture of CI and uh, CI current uh, available uh, testing laboratory. I will talk about the uh, frame definition as uh, in this presentation we will sometimes talk about framework and I will define what we mean in this context, in this presentation context. And I will talk about uh, which way we have of merging a testing framework into current CI. And in this presentation the main topic is about uh, using CI native implementation. So what is CI native implementation? And uh, I will talk about the the work that I'm doing for the civil, civil infrastructure platform project for uh, integrating uh, the civil infrastructure plot platform uh, testing framework into CI native. <coughs> and I will uh, also talk about uh, CI currently supported test and in the end I will show an uh, example of uh, one of the meal that uh, CIP CI uh, uh, is getting from uh, CI about the CIP kernel and in the end I will talk about the CIP web dashboard and give you a conclusion of this presentation. So what is CI? CI is a community-based open source distributed uh, test automation system that is focused on upstream kernel development. It is currently testing upstream on 155 of physical board and virtual board. <coughs> kernel CI uh, is organized by the Technical Steering Committee and the advisory board. I'm part of the technical steering committee. The technical steering committee is formed by the CI core developer and maintainer. And the CI core developer and maintainer are um, are maintaining a good uh, quality of the CI code and also uh, helping with the maintenance and adding new feature to uh, CI. And 
we also have an advisory board that is um, made by the premier organization representatives that are involved in KNSCI. These uh, representatives are managing the budget and help coordinating a KNSCI task. So KNSCI is needed for ensuring the quality, stability and long-term maintenance of the Linux kernel by maintaining an open ecosystem around test automation, practice and principle. So the KNSCI uh, composition is made by the uh, KNSCI core, uh, that is called uh, also core tool, that contains the main configuration and the main tools of KNSCI. And uh, these uh, main tools are, uh, <coughs> are used by um, Jenkins, uh, for uh, orchestrating uh, the building, uh, booting, and testing of uh, the kernel. KNSCI is composed also by a backend that uh, currently is being reworked, and uh, this backend provides also a KNSCI web API uh, that can be used for uh, getting data or uh, for uh, doing some task, like for example, uploading a file to the KNSCI uh, storage uh, server. We also have a front end uh, that is the web dashboard of KNSCI that is showing the data available from the backend. <coughs> And we also have, we are using, currently we are using Jenkins for orchestrating building and test. And uh, we have some uh, testing lab. Currently, uh, testing lab are mostly only uh, Lava, but uh, in the future we are considering to support also a different testing laboratory. And this testing lab, is formed by the test definition that are uh, containing the lava jobs uh, test definition using used by lava uh, laboratory for uh, executing the test on the kernel and so if a uh, new uh, kernel test need to be added to KNSCI uh, this is the place uh, where we want to add uh, the new uh, lava job test definition <clears throat> and the uh, testing laboratory uh, can be easily deploying deployed by using a uh, lava docker and by using lava docker you can uh, deploy your own uh, KNSCI lava testing laboratory and helping KNSCI by sharing your uh, resource or board with KNSCI. We also have a KCDB, that is a tool to submit a kernel test data to the KNSCI common uh, database. So here we can see the big picture of KNSCI and KNSCI is made by KNSCI native and but also KCDB uh, that is getting data from independent testing framework. So uh, KNSCI native is the main uh, CI of KNSCI uh, that is uh, booting and testing and building the kernel for KNSCI and sending the main result of each test uh, to KNSCI. <coughs> and in the bottom part we can see all independent testing frameworks that are not part of uh, KNSCI but we want to uh, share their own data with KNSCI 
and this independent testing framework can use a uh, case IDB uh, that is a tool for sending uh, their own uh, testing result to the KNSCI common database. So here we can see the list of the currently uh, available uh, KNSCI testing laboratory that are connected and shared to KNSCI. And um, some of that are shared by uh, people or organization to KNSCI. So uh, by using the Lava Docker repository, you can also share your own uh, testing laboratory to KNSCI and sharing your resource to KNSCI and helping KNSCI on getting kernel tested on more uh, different board. So in uh, this presentation we will sometime uh, talk about framework and in this, in this context, in the context of this presentation we are talking about testing framework including kernel building, booting and testing code. <coughs> For example, uh, the Siri Instruction Platform project have its own uh, testing framework for testing the uh, CIP uh, super long term support kernel tree. <coughs> so there are mainly uh, two ways uh, of um, contributing. Uh, to KNSCI. One is to merge in, uh, your code directly into KNSCI native and this is the topic that we'll be talking in this presentation and as an example I will show uh, a bit a part of the work that I uh, did in this month uh, as a member of the civil infrastructure platform and for porting the civil infrastructure platform testing framework to the KNSCI native. And the second way is to use uh, KCIDB and the KCIDB way has been presented at the Linux uh, conference Australia in 2021 uh, in the Gen2 KNSCI version 2 presentation and will be not uh, part of the topic of this presentation but uh, it's just only for know that there are these two ways of contributing to KNSCI. <coughs> so in this presentation we will talk about the KNSCI native implementation. So KNSCI native implementation is the main a testing framework of KNSCI and is used for automating the build, boot and test of the uh, kernel tree. And we have also an experimental bisection system and is uh, developed and this KNSCI native implementation is developed and maintained by the KNSCI community. So, um, from working with uh, KNSCI native implementation, I could see uh, that uh, some good point is that I've already integrated some uh, kernel boot and testing framework for working with uh, the kernel. And KNSCI, there is uh, support, uh, there is offered a KNSCI API. So, <coughs> We can work with the KNSCI native data or doing some task by using the KNSCI native API. And the code is maintained by the KNSCI community <coughs> and is a Linux Foundation project. And um, also by using KNSCI native implementation, uh, we can use uh, the resource shared with the KNSCI 
and so all the testing laboratory resources that are shared with uh, KNCI. <coughs> uh, one of the problems that I could see is that uh, is of course made only for uh, kernel testing, so <coughs> the tasks that are out of the scope of KNCI native are <coughs> not integrated into the currency native upstream code uh, for example uh, distribution packaging and that's why uh, gen2 have his own uh, kernel booting and testing uh, framework <coughs> so uh, the civil infrastructure platform uh, is a Linux Foundation project that aims to establish a base layer of industrial grade tooling using the Linux kernel and other open source project. And you can see the website link in this slide. <coughs> so uh, the CAP uh, team decided because of uh, a good point of Canessia Native Pro the uh, currency native to integrate uh, to start to merge their own uh, testing framework into uh, currency native so in the next stage in the next slide i will explain uh, what currency is doing for uh, integrating this to a currency native framework <clears throat> so, uh, the CIP testing framework uh, is uh, the code is only maintained by the CIP community. Uh, is on a GitLab pipeline, so uh, is using GitLab pipeline, and the code uh, that is using GitLab pipeline are mostly used only by the CIP community, and so is. Uh, there is uh, no, no cycling of such code because uh, it is not reusing some, some code and so all uh, such code have to be maintained by the CIP community so also future change and new feature uh, that are done uh, need to be maintained by the CIP community and the result are mostly only shared to the CIP team uh, by uh, <coughs> getting result from the GitLab pipeline. And also, uh, the test is using uh, the CIP Lava Laboratory that have uh, 21 physical and virtual active boards under test. By merging uh, the CIP te testing framework into CI, uh, we have a code that is maintained by both the CIP community and CI. so is allowing for coding reuse as most of the code is maintained by both community <coughs> and all change that we add to the code are and future change will be added from uh, CIP community and CANESI community. And results are also integrated on the CANESI and a summary is shared to the CIP mailing list. <coughs> and also by integrating into CANESI native, we can also use all the resource that is uh, using CANESI uh, so we have 155 uh, physical and virtual board and we do almost for each um, release uh, 190 build and also we can get some feature that we didn't have on uh, on the civil infrastructure testing framework like for example the experimental b section that uh, is helping with regression by doing automatic b section 
Also, uh, CurrentSign Native is currently supporting um, these tests, and we have some uh, subsect of Kessel test and LTP, uh, mostly because uh, each test that is added to CurrentSci uh, need to be uh, particularly kind of CICI is working by regression so need that each test that is uh, added to kind of CI native have to pass from for most uh, test <coughs> and after uh, most tests are passing it will be implemented into kind of CI so if there is like some case of test that is currently bro broken is not uh, currently added to the current CI, but it can be added in the future when uh, such problem gets solved. <coughs> so anyway, anyone can add uh, their own test and civil infrastructure platform added uh, the spectrum markdown checker as we was using such test uh, for the CV infrastructure platform uh, testing framework and and now such test is managed uh, sub, um, supported by both community so a good way of contributing to CI is adding new test so as i was saying uh, by uh, integrating the cp uh, testing framework into kinesci we also get a uh, mail from uh, kinesci with a summary of the kinesci uh, testing result and um, this is one example of such summary of the uh, CIP uh, Linux. And is uh, sent to the CIP uh, dev uh, mailing list. And we can see uh, if uh, some kernel failed to build or in other case if some uh, kernel failed to pass some test <coughs> and in case that something broke uh, mm. we will have a regression email that uh, will show on which board uh, the test failed and still on the same uh, regression email uh, we will get um, <coughs> a link with the detail that will send to the web dashboard that will give uh, almost same detail of the email about the fail and we will have some log file uh, with the a full log uh, of the fail and we, we will have um, last pass that is show uh, when which uh, kernel release was passing the test uh, before this test started to fail so if we have test for few kernel release we can see that there is a problem and it will add some relevant error message of uh, uh, from the log <coughs> of the error that we got and this can in some case can help to understand the problem and also um, 
is it can also start the uh, automatic B section but currently is experimental so we still have to see result from uh, such a system and we also got a dashboard uh, that is part of CI and by getting going to cip.kernci.org we can see each uh, CI release and the status for each uh, CIP uh, kernel release um, so we can see uh, if some build have had some problem or some test had some problem or some uh, release so in, in conclusion working on a uh, kernel native help to create a shared set of tooling and infrastructure for improving kernel dependability and assurance so like uh, CIP the civil infrastructure platform uh, by working uh, adding their own uh, tool to kernel CI uh, helped not only by to test uh, CIP kernel but also to test upstream uh, such tests are uh, in many cases are shared to also uh, with the upstream uh, kernel code <coughs> and also uh, kernel ci is a native is a useful tool for discovering kernel regression bugs and working with uh, doing kernel uh, To, to find uh, bugs on the kernel and helping improving the kernel dependability and assurance. So if you are interested, there is the kernel CI documentation. There is also a link about the work that the civil infrastructure testing project, a uh, civil infrastructure platform uh, test framework uh, my testing workgroup uh, is doing for uh, uh, integrating uh, for doing for testing CIP uh, with CI native and if you are interested by going to such a dashboard you can see uh, which uh, feature we are working on currently and what we are doing or what we did in more detail and uh, there is the current CI maintainer channel so of course uh, you can ask a question on uh, this presentation but also after this presentation you can uh, ask a question to the uh, current CI maintainer channel that are shown on this slide So that's everything for my presentation and thank you for listening. All right. Um, we've had a few questions come in. Uh, we've only got a very short time for questions. So I'll um, hand over to Alison, let her pick which uh, ones that um, she thinks we, we can okay. uh, talk about in the limited time we've got left. <laughs> Hi again uh, from Japan and live currently so um, we had uh, one question that is about uh, what is the recommended workflow for uh, adding support uh, for a new driver device if the question is about testing on the CI documentation there is a, a article about uh, adding testing uh, to CI. And I think that is the, the best way would be to check the CI documentation about how to add a new driver or device to CI for testing. <clears throat> and how to add, uh, another question is how to add a, or create a new test lab on the CI GitLab, uh, GitHub. Uh, there is a 
repository that is uh, Lava Docker, that probably is the fastest way for adding uh, a new test lab to CanSCI is to go into a CanSCI uh, GitHub um, repository. And there is the Lava Docker repository that is <clears throat> uh, simple to deploy because it is using Docker. And by just starting that uh, Lava Docker <clears throat> system, it will give you uh, a Lava Docker testing uh, system for uh, connecting to CanSCI. And for getting the key for connecting such system to CanSCI, uh, you have to open an issue to CanSCI core, uh, that is one of the repository into the CanSCI organization on GitHub. <clears throat> and you open an issue requesting to get in such a key for connecting your laboratory to CanSCI. And uh, you will after get contacted by CanSCI team for adding such uh, Lava Docker system to the CanSCI. There is also some uh, work to add uh, also different uh, system other than Lava Docker, that is the one we are using now, but uh, is currently a work in progress. And these uh, testing laboratory that uh, are uh, made by uh, CanSCI user are uh, there is some case that are made by some uh, company that are interested on test on their own hardware, but not only. Uh, also, uh, there is some personal case that uh, they wanted to connect their own hardware to uh, CanSCI, but the, that is for uh, some kind of personal usage, but not uh, related to company or such things. So uh, who want to help on CanSCI can uh, connect their own test lab. Doesn't have to be a company for doing such things. Uh, um, is I think that brings us I to the uh, end of our time slot. Um, so if you've got okay. any further questions, uh, feel free to uh, ask them uh, offline, um, and I'm yeah. sure Alice will be happy to answer those. Um, so thank you very much for your talk. Uh, we'll be coming back in uh, a bit under 10 minutes uh, at 4.20 p.m. Um, for David Go uh, speaking on kernel testing with KUnit. See you all then. Thank you.